today I'm talking to an artist called Ekaterina Sheath. Yep, that's uh, it's the first time we've met. Uh, we've had a little bit of contact over Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I know very little about her, except that uh, I've seen her huge art project in Leeds City Centre, which I really love, really impressed with it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, can we start with your name? Now, yeah. Ekaterina, uh, it's a great name and it sounds as though there might be a story to tell behind it, so... Yeah, well, it's actually a Russian name originally. Yeah. Um, lots, it confuses a lot of people because they're like, oh, are you Russian? And instantly start chatting to me and sometimes I've had people just start talking in Russian. I'm like, oh, no, I'm really sorry, I don't. Because basically it's where my parents met. They were both working in Russia and that's where they met. So they called me a Russian name just to confuse everyone. But I am British. So, <laughs> so if they've been working in Blackpool, <laughs> could have been very different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, so that's the story behind it. So tell me some of the, the rest of your story. The rest of the story, oof. Um, it's a very broad question, but I think, I mean, mostly it's about art, isn't it? That's what I do as a living and I've studied it and done it my whole life. So, and now it's really exciting to be able to make it into my career because it was one of those things that always drove me, even as a young child. Um, and then pursued it through education and up into university and yeah now I have the opportunity to do it as a freelancer so I've been doing that for a year um, and have been really it's been having loads of exciting projects and working on lots of things like the one you saw in Leeds City yeah, Centre. Yeah. So. Go back to the start. Yeah. How early did you start? Oh my mum always talks about stories where she'd have to she used to have this little almost like a seat belt in my high chair and she'd strap me in so that I couldn't take the pens and pencils walking and paint on the walls okay. but she would just leave me for hours apparently I just would be so quiet it's the only time I'd ever be quiet apparently I was a pretty naughty child okay. <laughs> but yeah I was always painting always drawing seems a bit cliche to say but it's one of those things right as long as you can remember <laughs> yeah, yeah basically and then from tiny child how did it develop it developed because I was really lucky. I was in a school that really kind of fostered it and cared for it and supported it. I had, um, especially in secondary school, I had this, the art department that was amazing. The teachers really, really cared about you progressing. And basically would I would spend all my breaks, my lunch times after school in the art department. Even when I was in sixth form, which is college, it was the same art department I stayed there because I was so happy. And we were given our own desks and I literally spent every waking hour I could there. Um, and the teachers were so supportive, always pushing you to go whatever you wanted to do, whether it was go bigger, try different media. So for them, really, they were the ones who were not there to encourage me and push me to pursue what I really loved. Because I think, unfortunately, a lot of education doesn't really encourage that. They prefer it if you go down an academic route. Um, so. Well, I just compare that to my own sort of background. Mm. Uh, I went to a grammar school. Uh, I couldn't draw. <laughs> and I wasn't musical at the time. Okay. Um, and I don't remember doing any art at all from the second year. Yeah, they Just don't. Just gone. A lot completely. of schools, I mean, it's quite terrifying. A lot of primary schools don't even include it in the curriculum anymore. Even primary schools? Yeah. That so, is a worry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you mentioned different media. Yes. So that's one of the questions. Um, I've seen what you do in the city centre. Mm. Just. Talk me through the different media that you use. So it's very different from what, so I know we were just talking about school and I was very much of a traditional art background. So I used to do large oil paintings and portraits and that kind of thing. At school? Yeah, at yeah, school. Right? Yeah. Whereas now, I've after university, I completely changed that. Um, I had a lot of time to experiment and for once my whole education was purely just art. So I could really try new things in media and one of the things that stuck out to me once I started working was mural painting, I really love it. So my work kind of, the media changes with according to what it needs to be. So for example, I never thought of myself as a digital artist. I never wanted to go into digital work, but because of the context of my work that it sits in, I have to. So for example, the Leeds City Centre job, um, it has to be printed in vectors because it's so large scale. I mean, some of them, the one I just did for Wakefield Council was seven meters tall. And my right, biggest yeah. fear as an artist would be pixelating my work. You never want that. So yeah. you have to work with a program called Adobe Illustrator, which uses vectors. So it kind of forced me into this media of working with the Wacom. So I draw everything digitally and then I do it through Illustrator. So that's 
sometimes I work that way and equally um, I obviously paint murals and some of them are by hand so that's very much the traditional way that I'd always been brought up with with pen well paint and paint brushes and just working at it for hours and hours until it's done. <laughs> right, okay. Do you do anything musical? I used to when I was younger. My family really encouraged it, um, but my brother's actually the musical one. Right. <laughs> yeah. And um, when you talk about your family, was there a, a big push or a big sort of liberation right throughout for, yeah, they, for you to go into the art? They always supported my art. They always knew that I was going to do something in the creative industry. They weren't sure what it was going to be and I don't think they were expecting street art and murals but they're so supportive and for example they were literally just here visiting um, I have an exhibition on at Skipton at the moment so they just came to visit which was very nice but yeah I couldn't have done it without them as well they're so supportive of what I do. I wanted to move on to university. Yes. Um, and you just graduated. Yeah, last year. Last year. Uh, how did you call school? It was amazing. I loved my course. I studied illustration at Leeds Arts University and I have nothing but lovely things to say about them because in particular their careers department, they, they were wonderful and they gave me so much support and advice and honestly were probably one of the elements that meant that I could jump into freelancing straight after graduating. Um, but it gave me the opportunity to experiment because like I said I come from quite a traditional background in regards to art education and the first year was kind of trying to break out of that and be a bit more playful um, find my own voice in what I wanted to do and why I wanted to do it as well um, and then the second year was again exploring media really taking advantage of all the facilities they had there trying loads of different things from screen printing, liner printing and being like mm, it's not for me, no I need to find something um, and then in third year, really narrowing down on what that was. And the tutors were amazing, really, really inspiring and supportive. And yeah, I had an amazing time. It was yeah. so grand. That's gratifying because I did one of these conversations with a, a, a woman, an artist who went, I won't say which university, but in the, I think it would be late 60s, early 70s. Mm. And she had a torrid time. Mm. Uh, one, because she said she felt alienated because everybody was really posh. Oh, I see. Uh, and two, there were very few women there. Yeah, uh, times have changed. Times have changed. So that's what I wanted to ask. Um, what's the balance between male, female and students now? You'll laugh. It's only about, I think there were about five guys in our whole class of 80. You've taken over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete opposite. Right. Yeah. If anything, they're having no problems with trying to encourage men to join, especially illustration they're uh -huh. struggling with. Although interestingly then there's this almost a switch of when you get into the industry, men still dominate some of the higher things like creative directing. So yeah, yeah. where does that flip from the education being predominantly women and then mm -hmm. the industry being not reflecting that. But So it's a, a place of growth for a young woman. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. I had such a great time because also you were surrounded by creatives. Yeah. It was the first time that had ever happened because before I was in a very academic school, I was the odd one out, I was the artist who yeah. kind of did paintings and it was really exotic and something a bit different, but I, it was the first especially time I was... Especially with the name. Yeah, <laughs> especially with oh, the she's... name. <laughs> she, she's a bit different, yeah. but um, you know, yeah, so when I was surrounded by other creatives, and also that was purely what you were doing. You weren't, you didn't have history or Spanish or other subjects to juggle in when you're doing, for example, when you're doing A-levels, you were dedicating every waking hour to your practice and your artwork. And yeah. that was really exciting. That was the first time that had been. Yeah, um, brilliant. And what was the impact that it had on you? What, how did it change you? Where did um, it take you? Yeah, I mean, it made me who I am. I know that sounds really cliche, but in the sense that it meant that when I graduated, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I, like I mentioned, the careers department, they gave me the tools to do that. And I was like, yeah, I can, I'll have a go at this. I can do it, let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, and that, I don't think I would have had the confidence to do that. And also my work before and after uni are monumentally different. So what I do now is purely because I had that time to kind of evolve my practice. Mm -hmm. um, and also having the network. You've been in Leeds for three years, connecting with creative people. Mm -hmm. You start knowing someone who knows someone and that is, I mean, it's a difficult thing in the industry, but it is kind of how it goes sometimes. Yeah. Where are you from originally? Originally from down south, from Winchester, right. a very okay. small little town. So 
is Leeds the place for you for the oh, future? Oh yeah, I love the mill. I'm not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> my, my daughter lives in Leeds now, and she loves it as well. I love Leeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah she loves it. Yeah. Um, go back to what you said about uh, the university's contribution to the, if you like the business side of things. Yeah. So when you speak to other creatives, mm. probably from other universities, is that strong in other universities or is it something that's specific to...? I haven't actually heard that great things about other universities' careers department. It seems to be almost rank, uh, unique to Leeds Arts University, right. at least from what I've heard. Obviously, I haven't experienced other universities firsthand, but when I've spoken to other people, they haven't received the same amount of support. And yeah. Our university was so great. It would, I, I mean, how I started out was they'd have open calls, which were basically competitions, that were just for the university students. So you already were cutting out so much of the competition that you would normally have. And then it gave you this amazing opportunity to work with a real life client, create the artwork, but you're still supported by the university. And it, could, it basically was allowing you to test the waters whilst you're still like very much in cotton wool of the university and also being supported by your student loan. And it just meant that you could start kind of branching out and you had those clients so that when you graduated on your CV, you've already said, no, I've got experience, you need to start paying me. Yeah, because I've already... so you didn't mess around with internships and yeah, things like no, that. Yeah, I don't know. I was just... Give me the money. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's a career. It's one of those weird things that you would never ask anyone else to work for free, but apparently for artists, it's fine. Yeah, that's okay. But, um, but yeah, no, they they were amazing. And also they do support students after... Um, university so I've just been in a studio space that was funded by them for six months here which was really lovely that was part of a competition that you could apply for mm -hmm. um, and with that you get mentoring so it helps you develop your freelance career um, um, in terms of direction that you went in mm. uh, I've talked to certainly one artist yeah who said well I can't remember if it's he or she but when they were at university there was nobody in the art department that did the sort of thing that they did. Oh yeah, um, especially street art. I mean, it was never. I never thought it was even an option for illustrators for a long time. I didn't. I always saw it in cities and was like, "Oh, that's so cool!" But I don't even know how you'd start doing that. I don't know how they get there, and it seemed like something that was so different from what I did. I mean. Although the illustration course was very contemporary, it seemed to have very set roots of kind of editorial or children's books. Um, but it kind of all started when a there's a local group called um, CA Spaces here, and it was partly because of COVID. Um, so when the lockdown happened, my parents live abroad, and I couldn't get to them. I was stuck in my uni house. It was me and my other international friend and we were so bored. There was nothing to do. Everything was shut. We were stuck in Leeds, which isn't even our city. Well, it is now, but our family wasn't there. Was this right at the start of your university? This was second year, so yeah. it was like slap in the middle, yeah. kind of the end of second year. Um, so yeah, and then I, they were looking for artists to paint a media box and I was like, well, I've never done anything like that. Sounds really fun. I'm really bored. I want to do something different. And I just did it. And that was when everything clicked and was like, oh, this is what I Here really like to do. Here we go. This yeah. is what I want to do. And that was when I came back in third year and was like, I found a whole new thing. This is really exciting. And my tutors were like, yeah, go for it. Let's try and see what we can do with that and they did there were opportunities within the curriculum to explore that it was very broad and you can push it in the ways that you want so yeah did covid have an impact on your career yeah a, a beneficial impact that was the weird thing right so i actually almost saw a nice silver lining to covid yeah. in the sense that my when i did the media box project it was because people had stopped and they were looking around their communities they weren't commuting and they weren't going on holiday and they were stuck at home like everyone it was and they were starting to look around and be and think about how they could change their communities for the better and also look out for people and support their neighbors and that's when kind of organizations like ca spaces and meanwood street art really start popping up and they started thinking oh actually street art could be really great to bring some color especially when everyone was locked in and so miserable and it was actually a weird silver lining of people started realizing how we could transform our local spaces through artwork 
So a lot of street artists were then given the opportunity to start doing things. So for me, it was the media boxes. When you say media boxes, are these the sort of connection boxes? Yeah, yeah, for, the uh, weird like electric boxes that have yeah. Wi-Fi or things like that, and they're so ugly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And they're so ugly. They're that horrible green colour. But yeah, they hired lots of different local artists, so I'm amongst many who've now painted them. Um, but that's kind of, for me, where everything started like snowballing almost, because I was like, oh, this is what I love to do. And also, it almost seemed to be going with a movement of, wow, look how much street art can do for our local spaces. Yeah. So I feel like COVID weirdly actually helped my career rather than, I know lots of others unfortunately found the opposite experience. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Next question is about where you're up to with your creative yeah. career. <laughs> and I mean career rather than, because it's a job, it's a profession. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it is my career. You've got to make a living out of it. Yeah, so yeah. how are you doing in that area? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So I've had lots of really exciting projects happen this year. Um, I recently just finished a, a curated and created artwork for an exhibition in Skipton. So that was all to do with um, their ephemera collections. So they had a call out looking for artists to react to their collections under the theme of interpretation. And I thought, I did some digging and I found their ephemera collection, which is all posters, tickets, flyers, all of those things. Where, technically should have been thrown away but for some reason someone kept them in their loft and then dug them out a yeah, hundred years later yeah. and they tell us so many stories so I applied saying that I wanted to tackle the theme of interpretation was more of um, our interpretation of what has historic value and historic importance and and what is um, an item that can tell us stories and you wouldn't think oh yeah that receipt's going to be really important down the line yeah, I would but yeah, I well, yeah. Sarah died. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then they, they really liked the idea and also because so much of the ephemera is very text heavy and they were finding it hard to exhibit because as soon as someone visits, you usually see text, they're not really interested, yeah. they'd rather see things that are quickly visual. So they really liked the idea of using my illustrations to bring those stories to life. So we, um, so I won the commission, which was really exciting, and then we created this exhibition um, based on the ephemera they had. And there were... 100, and, 100 plus boxes of ephemera that we tried to work through, although I wish I had years to work on it, yeah. but we didn't, we only had two months. But So yes, yeah, so I just finished that commission, that was really exciting. And then I'm currently working on one with the NHS. So we've got two different projects. One we're currently working on, which is creating a series of letters. This is a trust specific to Calderdale, um, letters for patients with severe mental health. So they've rewritten them and they've um, hired me to create illustrations in the hope that they'd be more accessible and supportive. Mm. Um, so we just finished that, and now we're moving on to creating a series of 13 murals in one of the hospitals. So that's my big job at the moment. Right. Um, but in amongst that, there's other things that I've been working on, but it's been a whole year of very exciting projects, so I can't tell you everything, but... <laughs> well, you said, I won, and you mentioned competition. Yeah. And this competitive thing, mm. artists don't do competitions and winning uh, that's things. That's how I get most of my jobs. Yeah. So I'm really interested in things that have to do with um, the public sector, communities, um, often local heritage, and most of those are come from the councils. Yeah. And the councils get allocated pots of money or have different projects that are going on. So, for example, um, I did one with Wakefield Council, and it was in partnership with um, Historic England and it was called Heritage Action Zone. Um, and they basically had a pot of money that they were allocating to rejuvenating the high streets or at least looking after them. Because for example, in Wakefield, they have one high street that's called Westgate. Loads of gorgeous buildings, many of them listed, but unfortunately were owned by nightclub owners who just weren't looking after them properly. Um, so that most of the money was allocated to looking after these beautiful buildings. But then to bring attention to that, they were looking for an artist to work with them. To, um, and I, that was one of the competitions. So yeah. they have these open calls. You can find them on things like arts jobs. You just have to hunt for them. Another reason why I love my, love my careers department, they send out these big emails uh, of right, what's happening yeah. in the local area. And yeah, the proposals take four or five days to write and sometimes you don't get them, that's just the way of it, but sometimes you do. Yeah. And then you get these really exciting projects. Right. Interesting, so. my back, I was in local government 
Ah, uh, so you're on the other side. side. <laughs> uh, it was on the community side, uh, so we did lots of sort of fundraising or bidding for things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also worked in mental health as well, interestingly. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, later on. Right, um, so where you're up to now is that you're fully functioning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Surviving financially, yeah, which is, which is nice. Well done to you. <laughs> My parents are very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy. Are you paying your student loan off? Oh god, that's a whole other discussion, oh, isn't yeah. it? We won't, don't have enough hours in the day. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter's the only person I know who's paid it off. Wow, that's yeah, impressive. Which is a bit disturbing, really. Moving on, I'd like to talk about the Leeds Commission. Yeah, um, because that's where I became aware of you. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen in a city centre in terms of art. It's exciting, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so, describe it for the, the purpose of the film. Okay, so um, when you're walking down Leeds City Centre, you see, well, you see murals. You don't really think about what's behind them initially, and you see these big, colourful murals. And some of them, I mean, one of them's, I think, five, six metres tall. I can't remember the exact dimensions now, but... And they just, the whole idea behind it was that these were empty units. And when you're walking down a high street and you see an empty unit, you just think awful thoughts and it's very depressing and you just think about the decline of the high streets. But then we covered them with these exciting, colourful murals and no one really notices that there's an empty unit behind it. But that was the whole point of the project. So it was when COVID was, we were in the middle of COVID and so many shops, even huge names had closed. And the high streets were looking very sad and and then the rule came that you could actually go shopping again do you remember when they yeah, opened yeah. up high streets and Leeds city center management looked around and were like oh we really need to make this look a bit brighter so that we can encourage people to come back um so that's when they approached five different artists and we all had to compete for the bid more competition yeah more competition. i won <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i won which is very exciting um but yeah and then they basically said because the competition was for one unit and they said, do you want to do all five? Which was really exciting. Yeah. And then the whole concept behind the um, artwork was that they're all people that I've seen on the street. So when I was doing the commission, I sat and drew on that street. I sat on a bench, had my sketchbook out and I drew people who walked past me. And the idea is that it's purely representing our community and who they are now. And it's really fun as well because it's a great way of trying to capture what people actually look like because I think sometimes you can fall into the stereotypes that are in your mind or just rely on the images that you have in your head but when you actually look at people they're a lot more interesting. Well that, that fits in with what I do in terms of street portraits mm. because you sort of conjure up this image that all the fellas have got trainers, yeah. jeans, puffer jackets but it's not to some extent that's yeah. true yeah uh, but there is a lot of variation a yeah. lot of difference of variety and sometimes it's the little moments that you wouldn't have been able to think of necessarily like i don't know a sausage dog and a little t-shirt or that i saw this kid with this absolutely enormous ice cream which was literally bigger than his head or someone was like suit they had their suitcase and on a skateboard and wheeling their suitcase alongside and they look so slick just like skateboarding down the street just stuff like that which you yeah. wouldn't necessarily have thought of and it's those little details that I like to capture in my work and yeah like you said fashion as well to try and make your illustrations feel very contemporary just look at people around you yeah. can you stop you there because I'm yeah. going to come on to sort of source materials okay yeah yeah minute. yeah uh, but you, t- you made me think of uh, I've got this thing about a fella riding a bike with yeah. another bike Oh, have you seen that? My boyfriend did that the other day. <laughs> he said he got a lot of weird looks. And I've been conscious of that since I was about five. Always wondering where what this bike went. And there you go. <laughs> uh, photograph somebody in, in Glasgow with the two bikes. Yeah. Uh, there you go. It's just a weird sort of thing. Um, right, so you've described the project. Um, the next question was how did it happen so I think we've covered that yeah but, uh, anything else you want to add to that um no I think it was purely because they were, they were struggling so much with the empty units I mean it continues to be an issue yeah um, and it's it was a way of trying to tackle that with something a bit bright and with yeah. more artwork it struck me the other day that as things pick up in the city centre your artwork may well disappear yeah and that was entirely part of the commission we had a yeah. meeting and they said 
weirdly cat the whole point of your artwork is so that we can fill the units so yeah. they might be taken down in a month they might be there for ages i mean one of the units that um we covered has been empty for seven years right so, so it could be i mean a bit, a bit yeah. of longevity there yeah for it. i mean two of them two of the seven um because we did two later on two of the seven are already gone great yeah. but five are still there yeah so well, you've got something to work <laughs> yeah with. yeah Okay, uh, we're coming on to process now, but b before we do that, mm. that project, which for a, a youngster is an absolute biggie. It was a it's biggie. It's a monster project. And I did it whilst I was at university, actually. Yeah, so the question is, uh, what impact has that had on you creatively, spiritually and financially? Well, it was amazing because I was actually won that commission whilst I was still a student. So I was given basically the opportunity to have a real life brief, which is very different from university briefs because you always say like, if it, it was a university brief, you'd never actually do it. So you'd never have to deal with any of the kind of real life things of yeah. emails and liability insurance and yeah. dimensions and printers and all those things. You just say, oh, I'd like to put my artwork here, end of yeah. discussion. So it was a very kind of eye opening to actually doing a commission rather than proposing one. Yeah. Um, and then, so that was a big learning curve and I was very happy I was supported by people who had experience. Um, but then it was really exciting because we were unfortunately the year group that didn't really get a degree show. So mm -hmm. something that was meant to be huge in our career was taken away from You've us. You've got yours now. Yeah, well that was what exactly my thinking was that I basically have free advertisement all the time in Leeds yeah. City Centre. <laughs> from a career's point of view. Value-wise, what, what's that worth? Yeah, I know. So that's yeah. really exciting. And I think a lot of things, well, I know things have come through that. I had yeah. one client approach me saying, oh, I saw your stuff in the city centre. Do you want to work for me? And yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's really exciting. All my friends tease me that I'm slowly taking over leads between the city centre, my media boxes, Morley. Oh yeah, <laughs> why not? Spiritually then, what, what did it do to you? It was so exciting. Like, how cool is that? I remember just standing in front of it and being like, oh, Dear God. my God, <laughs> this is so cool. This is so cool. I still, it still doesn't really sink in. And it's even weirder when people say, oh, yeah, you're the artist who's all over the city centre. And I'm just like, God, that's so yeah. strange. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing because it was, um, and also the joy it brings people is really special to me. Like, people will message me or for yourself, for example, you yeah. took photos of it with yeah. people and I love it when people reach out to me and say oh, I love this work or how much it affects the city centre and the community that's in that's what I love about my work and that's partly why I pursued murals as well because it's about the community it's in as well so when I'm doing the media boxes people come up and speak to me and I love that I love being connected to the people that that will be they'll be living with your artwork essentially so yeah perfect the first time I really noticed it was when I took a photograph of someone who said she was your pal and I've forgotten her name, oh. Grace. Oh, maybe, yeah. Uh, red hair. Yeah, yeah. And she she was, looked just like that um, she the did. girl She's, in the illustration. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so financially then, are you sort of in a position where you can sort of comfortably look at doing your own work? Yeah, so that was one of the weird things actually, partly with the, I was just writing a report with the funded studio space because one of my things in the application was saying that I wanted to do my own work, but actually the commissions that are coming through are are things that I really want to do. Yeah. And I don't, I'm lucky in that what I would do in my own time with my artwork is being, is are the things that I'm being commissioned for. So that's really exciting and being paid for, which is nice. Even better, sounds yeah. good. And the last thing about the Leeds project is, mm -hmm. um, and you've touched on it, um, is feedback from the community. So yeah. What do you get from local people? It's weird because uh, you never, sometimes I wish I'd just stand incognito and just hear people say things as they're walking past, but mostly it's people messaging me on Instagram um, because I have my handle on there and stuff. So people reach out and say lovely things, or like I mentioned, it's people who. I then meet in the, uh, when I'm just out and about and they're like, oh, you're the one who did that, I love that stuff. And people will say really lovely things and it's really encouraging. Um, and yeah, it's, I, 
it just feels very special to have the opportunity to make artwork that people love and that it brings light and colour to the community as well. Because that's one of the things I always think about, especially when I'm doing hand-painted murals, or any mural in fact, is that someone will have to walk past us every day. It might be on someone's commute or it might be around the, like, around the corner from their house. And I always try and pour as much energy and time I have because that person's going to see it all the time and you want them to feel that it's special. Um, so, yeah, my work is very much tied with where it is in the context and the people associated with it as well. The next question is, mm. are there people or artists who you've been influenced by or inspired by? Yeah, definitely. I mean, some of them were really helpful, actually. Um, Ian Kirkpatrick is an artist that I love. He's actually done some street art or um, public art in Leeds itself. And he, um, he really helped me when I did my Morley project. Um, that was the one that is um, showcased on the new pavilion, which used to be an old cinema, as a, well, and lots of other things. But um, and I reached out to him. He was so inspiring to me. He did these amazing public arts that and installations, and he was so helpful. He was really honest and helped me set up and basically told me how to do. Like I told you about the practical side of moving it from a university brief into a real world printed installed on a massive building situation yeah. so people like that have been really important and also reaching out to local artists in the community when i started my media box i had no idea how to paint a media box i didn't know that you needed to sand it and wash it and use metal paint but i was lucky in that the Leeds community are really friendly and also want to help others like move up through and that's what I always try and remember as well when it's really nice now I'm kind of getting the some of the students from Leeds Arts approach me yeah yeah and I'm always yeah. trying to be really honest and just say this is this is how I do it like let me know how it goes um so I think it's just such a lovely community and that's partly why I work at Duke Studios as well because um, it's all the Leeds based creatives and other freelancers and get to know them all and everyone's really friendly but yeah. when I talk to artists in Liverpool it's the same thing mm. it's, it's quite a small tightly knit community and yeah. people sort of helping each other and sort of learning from each other and whatever and drawing on each other's skills yeah and it's weird as well as so. apart from you we're sort of in there winning, <laughs> winning and competing <laughs> But I just um, worked at a festival um, a week back and there were other mural artists who were invited and we were all from Leeds. Um, and it was funny because I'd never actually met them in person, but all of us knew each other's artwork. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I, I've seen your medium box that is in. There was this other artist who does beautiful like hand-painted animal boxes. And I was like, oh, I walk past your box every day. It's so nice to meet you in person. Because you know everyone's artwork, but you don't necessarily know yeah. the person behind yeah. it, which is a weird twist of... It's the wrong way around, almost. <laughs> One of the, th the reasons that I'm doing this sort of thing is that sometimes I find artists more interesting than mm. their art. <laughs> you know, it's the person, it's the psychology, yeah. it's the sort of Finding drive. Out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. When I asked the question, I was thinking more in terms of oh, money or. Oh, who's my inspiration? So, are, are there any sort of? Um, big, <sighs> it's big such name? a hard question. I really, I think. That's not to downgrade the people that you talked about, but just... No, uh, no, it's fine. Um, I, like I said, I came from a really traditional background, so it is kind of the big names like Matisse and Monet, and I think also I just, I've been to a lot, I try to go to a lot of art galleries, and over the years I've collected postcards, mm -hmm. and I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've picked up so many things along the way. I wouldn't necessarily... Some nuances from different... Yeah, like definitely, and... Also, as my style changes, it's who my inspirations are. So when I was doing portraiture, it was someone completely different to now. Because now I find it really interesting to see the artist who is some doing something a bit different, doing something a bit contemporary, using public spaces to kind of dem like use artwork. And there was a really interesting campaign here called, um, I think it was called Posters for the People by In Good Company. And they were basically taking over ad spaces. So, you know, those big, like... Um, poles almost that are covered in posters mm -hmm. and instead of adverts for whatever and products you probably don't need they were covering in artwork and stuff like that I think is really Slip inspiring stickers and things. yeah so it was yeah. big posters of artwork and it was during Covid it was basically to try and lighten things up right. um, so I find that when people are pushing the boundaries of what we think art is I find really exciting yeah. moving on and it's something that you touched on earlier mm. um, 
and it, it interests me about where you find and how you use source material. Yeah. So I have different ways of approaching different um, projects. So, for example, with the Leeds City Centre one, it was about the people of Leeds. So it was very much kind of on location, drawing people. And that's the tool that I use to try and push out of my own constraints and my imagination. I mean, we're very impacted by the culture that we're brought up in and our own kind of subconscious biases that have been building up. And, and unfortunately, illustrators are kind of victim to that of we'll just create the characters that we've kind of already pre-made in our head and fall into stereotypes. And by pushing against that, I try and draw real life people and that's my way of trying to be more representative of who our community really is because if someone challenges me it's like well that, this person will pass me they are part of our Leeds community you can't make a comment elsewhere so and it's about being yeah representative and trying to push the boundaries of not just the unfortunately illustration has a very whitewashed representation of who's included in um, illustration so it's trying to push those boundaries so that's part of it looking at people but then there's another element to my work that I'm fascinated by history mm -hmm. I love history and especially like oral storytelling the kind of stories that might not necessarily have been documented in a book or told in the education system and people's stories as well like the little things that I think are really interesting that's like, where I started yeah uh, with the sort of audio conversations exactly that's why yeah. I thought that was really yeah. interesting when you were telling me and yeah. Um, I just went to an exhibition called by Ian Beasley, Be Beely. Um, it was in um, Salts Mill, I would highly recommend, because it was all about... Love that place, yeah. Yeah, it was all about, he was kind of doing these portraits of people and then he'd handwritten all of these stories underneath. And I loved that, it was their stories, it was mm -hmm. someone they loved who died in World War One, or it was their story of working in the mills or is their little stories that I worry are lost to time if we don't document them but that's what inspires me and I love local heritage as well and I think what I'm trying to use my illustration is to try and create an easier way to access that I think sometimes art galleries or museums can seem inaccessible to some or maybe not interesting as such or mm. also feel very separated from the location that it happened whereas when you bring it down to local stories in the space that it was happened where that person lived on the street this happened yeah i think that's really exciting and using illustration to kind of draw people in but yeah so i get inspired a lot by local heritage and that's what my wakefield one was all about and the new pavilion it was that the new pavilion in particular was that building specifically and what happened in that building and that the community had so many stories of course mm. they it was just open for years and years and years and it was the hub of the community for ages so it's trying to find those stories and give them a space and a platform when i did a tiny bit of research and yeah. I, I, I really don't like to do too much research it's okay um i came across a paragraph that you'd written mm. and it was all about that links to people yeah and I went back to it yesterday, I couldn't find the damn thing. <laughs> so, so I'm busking a little bit, but okay. it was your sort of wavelength and my wavelength mm. in terms of listening to people, recording yeah. things. I recorded it stories. was very close. Uh, so just tell me a little bit about actually working with individuals and groups yeah, so, and communities. So I think one of the good examples is the new pavilion job that I worked on. That was when I was um, I actually was working on it when I was at university. I won the commission whilst I was still a student. Um, and the university were great. They, gave, they agreed to allow me to submit it as my work so I could two birds on stone. But when I was working on that, the community was so friendly and I had a great time because the person who was in charge of the archives, he knew everyone and mm -hmm. he'd been living in Morley for years and years and years. Um, so he himself had stories about when the new pavilion was open. And it was quite useful that the stories were focused on one building because then I did um, call outs as well like on Facebook um, calling out and saying does anyone have any stories about what happened and people would be like oh, yes yeah. I met my wife there we went on our first date at the cinema or people would be like oh do you remember the cowboy movies or even the guy who was in charge of the archives he'd tell of when they used to go to the cowboy movies and then they'd get fish and chips on the way home and, and lots of those little things so people would tell me little snippets of stories on Facebook or I'd meet people because someone would say like oh you should chat to this person or this person will know more or speak 
speak to this person. And the Morley community was so welcoming and they told me all of these lovely stories that I could then document um, through my illustrations. But yeah, a lot of my work, I try and speak to people as much as I can, but social media has played an important part as well. But um, same with Wakefield, I do, aside from talking to people, I also research a lot. And then that's quite interesting because you're pulling in old stories and the new stories and the kind of remembered stories, but also what's contemporary, what's changed now. Um, but yeah, I love talking to people. People are so interesting. They've got so many stories to tell. If you Everybody's got a story. Everyone. Everyone's got a story. Everyone's got a story. And also, yeah, so and the communities themselves, everyone is... So, especially like Morley, for example, they were so passionate about their community. And then I go to Blakefield and they're so passionate about their community. And everyone's kind of, there'll be similar rhythms. So, like, these buildings, they went through periods of being a theatre and then a cinema and then a bingo hall yeah. and then a nightclub. And it have like, the and rhythms are the same. Out. Yeah, and, like, the rhythms are the same, but the stories are all different because it's different people. Yeah. But... I find that really exciting and I love that I've been able to pull my love of art and my kind of curiosity of people and storytelling into it together. Okay. Right, uh, coming together very nicely then, so, <laughs> which leads into my second last question I think, mm. yeah. Is there a grand plan? No, to be honest, I love the fact that my job is so random. I don't know what's around the corner. Sometimes I'll get an email in my inbox being like, do you want to work for us? Or sometimes I'll apply for a competition and get it. Uh, or sometimes I'll get weird things like, for example, working at the festival. It was just someone who recommended me and said, do you want to paint a mural live at a festival? And I was like, yeah. Why would you say no? Exactly. <laughs> and I love that. I love how different and varied it is. and and. That's one of the things I thrive on. So I could never say like, oh, well, this is going to happen next or this is where I want to go because it kind of evolves with it. However, I, having worked on the Skipton project with Craven Museum and also now that a lot of the opportunities I've been given, I've been able to pull history into it. That's where I kind of want to head. I'm really fascinated in how you can kind of break out of the walls of a museum or a gallery and document history through the tool of illustration. But it's like kind of piecing all the things together, like street art, history, illustration, and kind of making this weird creature that is giant installations of old photographs or things like that. And that I think that's where I'm probably going to be heading because it fascinates me the most. Is there anyone that's doing similar work to what you're doing? Um, Definitely in regards to street art and public installations, although I'm not sure whether a lot of it is tied into history, not that I know of, but I'm sure there are people doing it in their own way with their yeah. own voice. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'm when I um, go to different cities, I always pick up on other street art and I'm wondering what they're doing and how they've done it and what, mate like what materials they're using as well. Um, but yeah. Well, that answer takes the wind out of my next question because oh. <laughs> the next question is where do you want to be 12 months from now? Yeah, so hard, isn't it? Well, still definitely doing my job, I hope. <laughs> but I don't know, I think I'm so happy with the commissions that I'm currently doing. I wish it just continues, I guess is my, um, what I'd say, in 12 months' time. Um, and yeah, maybe working with different communities, slowly spreading across the UK, maybe internationally as well, I'd love mm -hmm. to work internationally. Or, yeah, working with museums would be a dream. I love working with Craven Museum and if I could work with others and learn more about different areas history, that would be ideal. Well, it's been a, an absolute joy talking to you. Thank um, you. I've loved your work in Leeds City Centre. Um, mm -hmm. It was uplifting, joyous uh, and an inspiration in terms of my own photography. And it's been a joy talking to you. That's so, lovely to meet you too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your so, time. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you.